In this episode, let's consider how the power of storytelling influences the art of theater. We hope the conditions return to normal soon so that we can bring our company of actors together to demonstrate some of the finer points of our craft. In the meantime, let's delve deeper into what makes the art of theater possible. Because the act of storytelling is woven so deeply into the fabric of human nature, it's often underestimated in its role to humanity. Storytelling takes place in all walks of life, regardless of class, religious faith, or political affiliation. Even though we often think of it as a harmless pastime, it's one of the ways that we communicate our insights, core values, and expectations for the society in which we live. It's a part of the human process of myth-making. Often, when we refer to something as a myth, it's a way of writing it off as untrue. However, myth-making holds an important place in human identity. As we said with the concept of fiction, myth-making is creating an illusion to reveal the truth. To understand this better, think about the stories you share at family get-togethers. When you hear of past events, you're well aware of the fact that the stories are being embellished. Often, the only time an embellishment is called into question is for the purposes of replacing it with an even more colorful embellishment. Everyone present at your family gathering is aware that the stories that are being told are not really what happened. However, sharing these stories is a part of creating an identity for your family. This is the process of myth-making. Does this dynamic sound familiar? You might have already applied the description of the myth-making at a family barbecue to the dynamics of a play production. The audience members know that the illusion that they are witnessing is not really occurring. However, they don't question the truth of what they see in the illusion. The audience acknowledges the truth that is revealed and, through applause, laughter, and emotional response, encourage the players in their artful storytelling. It's no accident that we typically associate the birth of theater with religious ritual. A ritual is a ceremony or action that marks the occurrence of a significant event. A wedding is a ritual that signifies a special bond between two people. A funeral is a ritual that signifies the passing of a human being. The process of ritual allows human beings to share in the significance of the human experience. Theater is also a ritual. In fact, we can look back to ancient Greece to discover that the origins of theater as we know it evolved from the religious rituals of that period. Perhaps one of the most familiar myths associated with theater's origins is the story of Thespius. In ancient Greek times, annual events included religious rites that involved dancing, music, and other early forms of performance as a ritual to signify the completion of the harvest cycle. This cycle ritual was typically performed in a sacred area, circular in shape, that became referred to as the orchestra. In the center of the space was an altar-like structure known as the thymel. The worshippers who performed the ritual were referred to as the chorus. As the myth has it, at one rite of harvest, a member of the chorus by the name of Thespius jumped onto the thymel and engaged in a dialogue with members of the chorus, thus creating a dynamic that ushered in ancient Greek theater, which was the source of the art of theater as we know it. The truth is there are fragmentary records of an early dramatist by the name of Thespius who won awards at early festivals, but there is no reason to believe that theater was actually created from the scenario described in this myth. However, there is in the myth a simple story that sows the seeds of truth. 
It's generally accepted that theater did, in fact, evolve from these early rituals into an annual festival that celebrated Dionysus, the ancient Greek god of wine and fertility. The Dionysia, as it was called, included an annual contest that presented a week's worth of what was likely the first category or genre of theater, tragedy. In Poetics, Aristotle defines tragedy as an action that is whole and complete and of a certain magnitude. The word he used to identify this action was mimesis. Mimesis is a special form of storytelling. It tells stories through an imitation of action rather than through a verbal narrative. It was the Thespius of Myth who performed the first instance of mimesis when he jumped on the thymel and began a reenactment. In truth, there is no way of knowing how the art of theater actually began. But this myth is a simple way to address what are basic truths about the development of theater. In this myth are implications that foreshadow how the physical evolution of theater reflected its transition from a religious ritual to an autonomous art form. In other words, it tells a story about how theater became an art form in its own right. Not only did theater depart from other forms of storytelling when it embodied the quality of reenactment, it also evolved from a religious ritual into a secular or non-religious event. And even though the mimesis that makes up plays, film, and television may largely be for the purposes of simple entertainment, this imitation of an action still maintains a profound place in the human psyche. In case you're wondering, the word thespian, which is often associated with actors, evolved from the myth of Thespius. It's important to consider theater's shift from a religious ritual to an autonomous art form. This is one of the reasons that there's a certain sense of occasion that occurs at play productions, whether it's a Broadway production or a school play. We'll consider this important development in the next episode of Theater, Storytelling in Action. We'll see you then.